Welcome to City Week, ladies and gentlemen. I am your host, Alton West. Today I will have Vaughn from the Troop County Center for Strategic Planning, Kay Duran, Executive Director, and also we'll have on our very own Labor Commissioner, Mark Butler. So ladies and gentlemen, I know you don't want to miss those exciting interviews, so stay tuned in a moment and we'll be right back to start the show. I found out about Troop County Works at a job fair. I registered and I also attended the workshop that they had. And also that was where they uh, updated my resume. And from there, I continued to stay involved with Troop County Works. Troop County Works have benefited me in my career development by a networking and support that they offer through their workshops. And I get continual emails about, you know, the jobs, the current jobs that are located here in Troop County and for uh, Troop County people. Troop County Works website is a website that is, ba is for Troop County people. It doesn't direct you all over, you know, the country or the state, but it keeps you right here with the local jobs that are available for Troop County. Welcome to City Week, ladies and gentlemen. Today I have on a guest that perhaps needs no introduction because I think the city of LaGrange knows her very well. Former council lady, Kay Duran, and now the executive director for the Center for Strategic Planning. Kay, welcome to the show. I'm glad to be here. Thank you for asking me, Alton. Well, Kay, it's always an, an, an excitement to sit down with you to hear about some of the wonderful things that are taking place. Uh, and I know that, like I said, you were a former city council lady and did a remarkable job there, and, and, and you're doing a great job over at the Center for Strategic Planning now. And I know there's a lot of uh, things going on, and, and as we were talking before we came on, you saying you seem like I always call you this at the right time to kind of get a, a scoop of news. So right. I know there's some things happening. So let's just talk a little bit about the center and then we want to talk about a new program that you all are unveiling there, a uh, troop train classes, correct? That's correct. All right, let's talk about the center a little bit, Kay, just to kind of give people a background and then just move into some other topics, okay? okay? Well, the uh, Center for Strategic Planning was created after about two years of work in developing a strategic plan for Troop County. And um, rather than having that plan, that document just set on a shelf, mm -hmm. um, the leadership wanted to do something to be sure that we moved forward with that. And so the center was created and our board is made up of leaders throughout the county in particular areas. Their position on the board is related to their position, whether or not it's the head of county government, city governments, um, the college, technical college, uh, economic development, the Chamber, Callaway Foundation, all of those, West Georgia Health, they serve on the board and we meet on a regular basis. The, the, uh, the first initiative for the center has been workforce development mm -hmm. and trying to look more closely at our unemployment and what we could do locally to help get our, our local people back into jobs. So that's been the largest um, our largest amount of effort has been in that area. Okay, uh, and, and you say it's so important we talk about local, the local workforce and everything because I know at once upon a time, and you perhaps have seen it as well, we had a big manufacturing uh, uh, industry here, industries I should say, here in our area. And of course over the time we've seen a lot of those that have uh, you know gone away uh, and we've seen you know some come back to kind of give some work to the area and things of that nature. But why is it important that we uh, as the city of LaGrange, city of West Point, city of Hogesville, and Troop County make sure that our workforce uh, is trained and ready. And, I, and talk about that a little bit for us, Kay. Well, you know, one of the things that uh, we need to think about is that employers want to hire the best qualified people for their jobs. And they are not constrained by where someone lives. Um, I have found the employers in our community to be very civic minded, very engaged in trying to be um, engaged in whatever kind of uh, needs we might have in the community. But to ask an employer to, um, you know, you have to hire Troop County people first and overlook someone that may be better qualified, I think is just overreaching. Mm -hmm. So for us, what we needed to be able to do was to create some vehicles that would make it um, 
that, that could that could make our workforce more available to them. Mm. And so that that was one of the things that we did. And one of the reasons why we tr uh, created Troop County Works, um, we wanted to have a, a website where employers could register their jobs, and those jobs are visible only to Troop County residents. Mm -hmm. They can register the, for the website. And we went live with that in October of 2009. And it was a little slow at first getting it moving along, but it is really caught on. The employers see it, particularly the small business uh, people, really see that site as a, a great place for them to be able to advertise their jobs. And I have had many to tell me that they, the job applicants were wonderful and that they really had a hard time choosing. And I like that's, to hear that right. because those are our residents. They're Troop County residents that they're looking at. Mm -hmm. So that was a great strategy, I think, to help get some exposure to our Troop County residents to the local jobs. Very good. And, and you know, I know and I've seen and talked to a couple of people that have gone through the Troop County Works program and it's a remarkable thing. But let me ask, Kay, as, as, if, as we have all these resources in place to help our residents of Troop County and the surrounding area to prepare themselves, what do you see as the busy, biggest obstacle as far as employment opportunities? Well, I think what we have to do, it, what I've had to do is to try to dig down and try to take a look at who who, what do the long-term unemployed look like here? And you, you can't look at the data and say, you know, our unemployment rate is 11.8. Let's go find those 11.8 people. That's, very, that's difficult to do. Um, but as I have just looked at people that have come to our seminars, uh, people that I have talked to, I see the, the long-term unemployed people um, as, number one, they were people who were employed in an industry and their experience is with an industry that doesn't exist anymore. So I think those people sometimes are the ones that get pushed to the side because their experience doesn't match up with the, ex the exact jobs that are available. Mm -hmm. Um, rather than looking at how their experience could translate into these new jobs, they're just being overlooked. So that's one of the things. Okay. I think there's some people that are not getting jobs because they don't have any experience. Uh, our young folks are encouraged to get a high school diploma, they're encouraged to get their GED, and they get it, and then have a very difficult time getting a job because they don't have any experience. So that's number two. And I think the third reason why people are not getting jobs are there have been some gaps in their employment or long-term unemployment because of the very reasons that I've said, so they're getting overlooked. Mm -hmm. Now, I'm not telling you about some of the obvious things because people that are on drugs and people that have a recent criminal background really have a difficult time. That's correct. But those other mm -hmm. three people, they need, a, they need a hand up. They need some help. Absolutely. And, and, and speaking about that, uh, Kay, I know that there's a new program that you all yes. are piloting. Talk to us about the troop train classes and what is that all about? Oh, I'm so excited about this. Okay. You know, um, in our Workforce Development Committee, we've just got some great minds there and people that think out of the box. Mm -hmm. They're the very ones that came up with the idea of the website, which was very innovative and new. Uh, for our time. Some other people are catching on to okay. the idea, but they were the ones that came up with it first. One of the things they wanted to do was what can we do? What kind of a certification can we give to our people that is recognized by the local, by the local employers and they'll say, hmm, I want to hire that person. So that's what we started doing was looking into that and um, visiting with some of the employers and asking them the question, you know, what can we do? What kind of employee, employee are you looking for? What's, your, what's the, the, the biggest obstacle that you have? And they, the thing that they, all of them said, we need people who have a strong work ethic that will show up for work, be there, be on time, know how to dress, know how to talk, and know how to behave in the workplace. Oh my goodness. So, came back to the committee, Dr. Pete Snell with West Georgia Technical College put together a curriculum five-week, very rigorous curriculum, 
and we took that back to these same employers. What do you think about this? They tweaked it a little bit and said, let's go with it. Well, it's going to cost something for us to do this. So I thought, well, we've got to go find some funds for this. <laughs> so I went to talk with the West, West Central Georgia Workforce Investment Corporation. They have a local presence here in our Department of Labor and talked to them about it. And they said, well, we, c we could fund this, but we've got to be sure that these people are going to have a job. It's not just a matter of going through this. So you need to get some employers that that's will right. sign on. So that's what we did. All right. Absolutely. We got the employers to sign on. We've gotten um, um, the Sheriff's Department, LaGrange Police Department to do our background checks for us. Um, the Recreation Department's providing transportation so we can go on some plant tours. Technical College has been fabulous working with us and uh, been working with the Department of Labor and trying to get the word out about the program. Mm -hmm. So we um, put, the pro put, it, put it out. We received 41 applications. People have had, can I tell you about the- I was going to say, yeah. I, wa I want you to hear what these people have yeah. had to go through just to get in the class. We definitely do, definitely want to hear about that case. So go ahead and tell okay. a few more moments what, left. What we, what we had to do was uh, we had 41 applications and then they had to go through an assessment process just to get invited to be in the class. Okay, so it's just not open to... And not, you, you, okay. you, it wasn't just come one, come all, because okay. we could only handle 25 okay. people. They first had to show up for a two-hour test to test their reading and math skills, to be sure that they were at a level that they could possibly complete this training. So basically a placement type mm -hmm. thing. It, that's right. Okay. So they had to do that first. Some people didn't show up even for doing that. Some mm -hmm. people didn't pass that. Go back to that work ethic, doesn't it? Had to go, that's right. Then they had to go, on another day, they had to show up for a four-hour test that tested their personality, their, you know, those types of things and their skills, their motor skills and those types of things. Well, you can imagine some folks didn't show up for that, so there's a little bit more weeding out going mm -hmm. on there. Um, we also had them to take the Georgia Work Ready Assessment. Okay. And everybody that was signed up for that showed up for it. Um, then came the criminal background. Uh oh. So we did, a, we did some further weeding out with a criminal background check. And then we had 25 people invited to come for orientation on Monday, August the 25th. Now, when we had that, some more people fell out mm -hmm. and didn't show up for the orientation. Okay. And then I went through the orientation process that explained to everybody that you know, what the curriculum was and that it was critical that they show up for the entire five weeks, Monday through Friday from mm -hmm. nine to four, that um, they could, they had to be present and, not, and on time. Right. They were only allowed one late and one absence for the entire time in order to get the training program. This would show that they have what it takes to show up and come to work. Very good. Kay, I want to ask you, can we come back, because I want to sure. come back and get more information about I would about love this. to talk but some further about it. before we go, can you give them contact information if someone would just like to sign up for it, the next one? It's too late. Too late for it's the next It's too one. late, okay. but I would say this to anyone who would be interested in this in the future to register on Troop County Works okay. Very good. because I will be sending out an email to everybody on Troop County Works if this is being offered again. Okay. Well, Kay, I'm going to tell you, I would, it's always exciting to sit down with you and I'm going to tell you, we're going to get you on for the entire show. I would love it. So we it. can come back and hear some of the success stories that comes out of this new training program sure. that's being piloted here. And by all means, we, we, next time we come on, we want to kind of talk a little bit more about the unemployment rate and how that has impacted our community as well. Okay. All I'd right? love to. Kay, Thanks thank so, so much for having thank me. Thank you very much. Okay. okay. All right. Ladies and gentlemen, stay tuned. We'll be back for more City Week in just a moment. When I heard about the Troop County Works website, I went ahead and registered for the site, even though I had a job at the time. Uh, I found a lot of great resources on the site. Um, however, last May I was laid off and uh, I was looking for a job, so I immediately turned to the Troop County Works website uh, to see if there were any job posts available. Um, I also, I had just missed a resume writing workshop and I was able to submit my resume. There was a professional review done and my, web, my resume really came out looking great. Um, I used all the online resources that were available on the website. Um, I found a career fit 
through a job posting on the site and could not be happier with the job I found. I just really wanted to thank Troop County Works, uh, the website, the whole team for helping me and my family find a great career. What if you could move to the front of the line in your job search? What if you could move your career into the fast lane? What if you could hit a home run with your career? Tired of being just another face in the crowd? Congratulations, welcome aboard. Thank you. Hi, nice to meet you. Come on in. Work Ready gives you a way to stand out, improve your skills, and get ahead at work and in life. Welcome back to City Week, ladies and gentlemen. Today we're very fortunate to have our very own Labor Commissioner to be in the City of LaGrange. I'd like to introduce to you at this time, Commissioner Mark Butler. Mark, welcome to the show. Oh, thanks for having me here today. Well, Mark, you know what, um, as we were talking, seven months now, has the job been all that you expected it to be? It's been that and a little bit more. A little right? bit more, so, right. <laughs> yeah, uh, I think we were talking earlier, said that uh, I don't think I could have walked into the job at a worse time. I mean, you know, I had some people ask me, you know, why did you run for this job? I mean. You know, we got record unemployment and, uh, and all the problems that we have in the economy. And I said, well, you know, I've always enjoyed a challenge, and uh, we definitely have a lot of challenges here in Absolutely. Georgia right now. Absolutely. Let's just talk about how we can kind of uh, meet some of these challenges head on, Mark, because we do, as you stated, unemployment is up, you know, people are looking for jobs. What is the state doing from the state level to try to help people that are wanting to be employed? What is the state doing to help them? Well, we're, we're actually uh, going back and taking a look at what we have been doing, and we're revamping, of, uh, at least in the Department of Labor, a lot of the programs that we have. Mm -hmm. uh, one of the things that we're starting to do that we haven't done in a while is we're really reaching out to the business community, uh, because uh, as most people would probably agree, I mean, the government is not going to be the one out there creating the jobs. Uh, it's going to be our business community. They're the ones that's going to be doing it. And so we have been out, I, I have met with businesses now South Georgia, North Georgia, Central Georgia, uh, and we're finding out uh, what some of the problems are out there. And we've, uh, one of the things that was kind of surprising to us um, with all the news that we'd had about high unemployment, uh, we had, we ran to several uh, companies, large companies uh, through our travels that stated they were having a very hard time finding qualified employees. Uh, and sometimes it was a case where they, they were looking to hire eight. In one case, it was 200. Mm -hmm. uh, and so uh, that's when we started uh, really digging into the problem and found out that uh, with some of the new jobs and some of the expansion projects and some of our current companies, they are starting to use newer technologies and newer techniques and there's a skills gap. Uh, and so we've been trying to work with uh, these businesses, our technical colleges, uh, if there hasn't been a connection between the two for whatever reason, uh, we're trying to facilitate that. Uh, make that happen so we can make adjustments on our side as the state, as the as technical colleges, and assist them uh, to make adjustments to their program and get some partnerships going between the private sector and the public sector uh, to get our economy back on track. Absolutely. You know, Mark, you said some things. You know, we had Kay Duran on, who's our executive director for the Center for Strategic Growth here in Troop County, and she said some of the very same things that you just said about there being a little disconnect in the I guess the quality of, of applicant that's applying for the jobs that matches up those skill sets. And I want to talk a little bit in a moment here. I know that the state has a, a program that, th that they're unveiling in the school system. They're trying to help to fill that gap. But before we get to that, I want to talk a little bit about small businesses. And I know yes. that you know the small business is the backbone of this country. It is. Talk about small business throughout the state of Georgia a little bit for us, Mark. Well, you know, a lot of people, when we talk about economic development, growth, and jobs, 
you know, when you see it in the press, people talk about, well, we need to be attracting this business, we need to be attracting that business. Uh, but, you know, what people have to also understand is the, the, like you said, the backbone of Georgia's economy is the small businessman. I, myself, small businessman, um, uh, was in business for over 20 years before I took this office in a shop that had six people in it. And uh, we made a pretty good income. We created jobs in our place where we were from. Um, but that's where most of your job growth is going to come in the next six months to a year. When you talk about a new prospect, those jobs really don't come around until about a year and a half, two years. Mm -hmm. uh, we have to concentrate more on helping our current business. We have to make sure that government is not impeding their growth. Uh, I was talking to somebody earlier today, and they said, why do you think, you know, why, why, why can't the economy get back on track? And, you know, and I was telling them, I said, well, I, said, I think our biggest problem right now in our economy and in our communities is confidence. Mm -hmm. uh, right now, Georgia businesses right now are lacking confidence because they look at the problems in Washington. They see the things that are going on where we, uh, you know, run up to the brink of, uh, of disaster with, uh, with, with a, a, a default uh, mm -hmm. with the government loans. Mm -hmm. and, mm -hmm. and, and we can't do that. I mean, that's doing nothing but just hurting the confidence of our business out there. You take a look at the uh, balance sheets of some of the businesses right now, and they're doing okay in, some, mm -hmm. in a lot of cases. And they want to invest uh, in America, in Georgia, uh, in, in Troop County. That's right. But they're nervous about it. Mm -hmm. They're afraid, and if I go out and I spend this money, I mean, is it, is it, you know, we hear all these economists talking about, well, oh, no, we're going to slip into another recession. <laughs> you know, I don't see that right now. I, I feel confident in Georgia. I feel confident in our economy. Uh, I feel good about the West Georgia area. I think we have a lot of upside. Uh, we just need, right now, the best thing for our economy is to, for government to be more of an assistance rather than a hindrance, mm -hmm. and that's kind of where we're at right now. Okay, we're well, very good. And talking about the government be, being an assistance, Mark, from the state level, I know that there's a program that you all are unveiling in some of the school systems throughout the state of Georgia called uh, Jobs for Graduates. Um, uh, and, and the soft skill programs, which is a certified program. Talk a little bit about that as we see the state trying to match up with the local level and helping to fill that void there as far as that qualified applicant applying for those jobs. Talk about that, the soft skill, and also then we'll talk about the jobs for gra uh, Georgia graduates. You know, this is actually um, uh, a subject matter. Uh, we're talking about uh, Georgia. Uh, Georgia Best program. Okay. All right. uh, and this is an idea that um, uh, uh, two different areas that kind of brought this to light. Uh, out talking to the business uh, uh, owners out there uh, and the kind of uh, people coming in and applying for jobs. And also, actually, uh, one of the local representatives from this area uh, brought to light in the General Assembly, Rand, uh, Representative Randy Nix. Right. Um, uh, he, he's very aware of this same problem. It has to do with soft skills. Uh, a lot, you know, you and I, we might call them common sense skills. That's right. Things mm -hmm. that some, you know, it seems like some of the workers don't seem to understand that you have to show up on time. You have to be there every day that you're supposed to be there. That's right. Uh, and we have, you know, and, and you have to dress appropriately. I talked to somebody the other day, had interviewed somebody, and the, and the young lady showed up and cut off shorts and a tank top oh to, to work in a dress shop. <laughs> She's not going to probably way. get that job. No. <laughs> you know, and, and back in our days when we grew up, you know, the parents taught you how to do all That's that. That's right. But there, there, there is a gap there. And so we have started working with the Department of Education, Superintendent John Barge okay. and his team have been great to work with. Uh, and we're taking what we're learning out there in the business community, what they're needing, what those gaps are with those soft skills, mm -hmm. working with the Department of Education to help integrate that into our uh, school curriculum. Now, it saddens me that we have to, to do that because that's really not the job right. of our educators. However, if we want to work together and grow this economy, this is a need. It's a definite need that's out there. I mean, the business people are telling us that they need this. Uh, so, you know, we're working with them to get that rolled out into a new, into a new curriculum. That's very good. We, uh, and, and, you know, again, uh, Kay Duran, our director, I keep going back to what she said. In the, in, in his Great title, soft skills. I mean, like you said, those common sense things, how to shake hand, how to give an uh, individual the interviewer eye contact, right. you know, how to speak properly and things of that nature. And, and we find that not only the people that are coming out of high school or colleges may not have those skills, but people that have been unemployed for long periods of time that are now trying to enter back into the workforce. So we we're very glad that the state is rolling that out. And then the other thing that I want to talk to you about is a job for a Georgia graduate, which yes. is a, a program that's also being unveiled in the high well, school. We actually have, it's been around for a while, okay. but, uh, but we're, we're, we're going back and taking another look at it okay. and see what we can do to improve it. Because one of the things that we found when, we, when, I, when I came on board back in January, we got to look at different programs, and this one jumped out at me. 
uh, it's only in about 34 uh, high schools across the state, which is really not that many. Mm -hmm. Unfortunately, we're, our, our hands are kind of tied on that due to funding. Uh, but it's a great program. And one of the great things about it is I learned about it and I, and I talked with our, our people at the Department of Labor who, who work with it in this program, work in the schools. They actually, uh, the, the counselors have to go out and recruit the worst students oh, no. in the schools. Uh, the ones that you know uh, that miss school the most, that have mm -hmm. the bad grades, have low motivation, and the counselors are actually graded on how bad of a students that they go out and recruit. Oh, and their job is to counsel uh, these uh, young men, young ladies, mm -hmm. and to help turn them around okay. and give them the skills they need to be successful. And the, and our uh, our program for last year was actually uh, given an award by the National Association because they achieved uh, better than a 90% graduation rate oh with the students that were in this program, which is amazing. Absolutely. And we talk about dropout rates all the time. This is a program that works. And uh, we are also working with Superintendent John Barge and the Department of Education to see if there's a way that we can find the additional funding through grants okay. or anything that we can do to expand this to other schools. That is absolutely outstanding. So this is in 34 schools throughout the state of Georgia, yes. and, and basically you're, and I don't like to use the labels, but the at-risk individuals. Yes. They run them through this program, and is is there time? I guess throughout the whole school well, term. Well, uh, it, it has been a one-year program, one, okay. but we, we have identified uh, a way to expand it to a two-year program. Okay. And uh, typically, we we, we have uh, the uh, the kids in this for. Right now it's been a one-year program, but now we're going to start rolling it out to be a two-year program. Okay. So All two right. years in high school. Okay, well, very good. And as Mark, as we get ready to close out, I was looking at the website and a lot of the things, you, the goals and uh, the mission of the Georgia Department of Labor, and I see that there was things kind of very much parallel to what we here in Troop County are doing as far as trying to repair, you know, the citizens of West Point, LaGrange, Hogansville, and tr surrounding Troop County to be ready for the jobs when they come. And I just want to read one if I, if you, if you will oh. Allow me to, it says to insist individuals to obtain their goals and increase self-sufficient through employment training, comprehensive rehabilitation, and supportive services. And I just want to say from, you know, the Troop County resident, we thank you and the state for what you're doing to help us to uh, be able to get people qualified here with the programs like uh, the soft skills and the job for Georgia graduates as well. Uh, because it, it seems like, again, we're all concerned because you know, if the economy is to get strong, it's meaning putting people back to work right. and not just putting a person in a position. And, and I'm glad to see that you guys are looking at that and, and see that there's, there's that at need as well. So I wanna thank you very much, uh, Mark, for coming out, sure. uh, to taking time out of your schedule to come here to talk with us. And I do wanna have you come down again uh, to just kinda get maybe to have you talk with Kate or Randy and, and, and to introduce yes. her to you as well. Love to. All right, Mark, thank you very much for being here today. Oh, it's been my pleasure. All right. Ladies and gentlemen, stay tuned. We'll be back for more City Week in just a moment. Will Brader was looking for a customer service representative. And just through local communication and networking, we found out about the Troop County Works website. So we go online and it was easy to process our posting and register Will Brader to the website. And then we posted this job for a customer service representative and received many, many talented applicants that we were able to choose from. And so as a result, we were able to hire local talent to our company, and it's just worked out great so far. Ladies and gentlemen, thank you for joining for City Week. My guests have been Kay Duran, Executive Director for the Center for Strategic Planning for Troop County as she talked to us about Troop County Works and how Troop County is working for the citizens of Troop County. We also had on the Labor Commissioner, Mark Butler, who talked about the things that the state level is doing to help citizens prepare for the jobs that are here in Georgia, and also programs that they're unveiling in the school system to help high school students prepare for jobs. Ladies and gentlemen, I hope that you find those guests to be very exciting. And as always, I want to invite you back for more of City Week. Get work ready certified. 